to Salt Down Pro Coach Nutrition uh, monthly webinar. This month we are talking about our macronutrient plan, uh, including the macronutrient timing, how each of that works, and some frequently asked questions. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to share my desktop. We're going to get into this. Uh, the general view of how this plan works is based on manipulating the macronutrients and how your hormones normally work around your workouts. All right, so again, as we've talked on previous webinars, and if you're not sure, the first, one of the first things we talked about was carbohydrates, right? And when, does that, when, when do you guys need carbs? When do we need carbs? Two times. Two times we need them, and the rest is like, yeah, two times we need them. Yeah, before and after workout, Erica, gold star. Yeah, exactly, Melinda, exactly. Before and after, you guys get it, right? The rest of the time, because carbs are our fast energy, right? We need that. And so if we're going to have a high-intense workout, fat is not going to be enough of a fuel source to propel us through there. Protein is not that fuel source. The rest of the time during the day, what do we want to be burning for a fuel source? We want to be burning carbs? What do we want to burn? What do we want to use? Fat, exactly. For body composition, staying, we want, we want to burn fat. And which is the macronutrient we want to use for recovery? Protein, right? Exactly. We're getting, you know, taking uh, specific things, making it very general here. But that's why we're going to have this plan to kind of chunk it down a little more for everyone. Uh, right? So that's the general idea. Uh, do you need carbs when you wake up? You're out of bed. Do you need a bunch of carbs? Yes or no in the morning? First thing. If you're going to sit at your computer and type all day, do you need carbs to do that? Right? If we're using them, what we're doing is we're masking fatigue. What it means is you're exhausted and we need a bunch of sugars to spike us up. And what happens after we're spiked up? Are we going to stay up there forever? Crash, drop, crash, exactly. Once we crash, so what do we need next? What comes next after the, after the crash? Whoop. Carbs, spike back up. And what happens next? Crash, so all day we're doing this. So tell me this now, and this is very important for this meal plan, what gets stored as fat? That's different than burning fat. What gets stored as fat? And if you're getting this, you're going to crush it on this plan. You're going to crush it. What does our body store as fat? There's a couple things. Excess carbohydrates, exactly. Especially in the form of what, Emily? Or anyone here? Especially in the form of sugars, yes. So if we're having these sugars, you're having your Red Bull, you're having your, you know, your processed foods, which is just sugars, right? Talk about a couple movies I want you guys to watch this coming month before our next call, uh, uh, Food, Inc. and Forks Over Knives, right, two of them. Again, I don't agree with 100%. I'm a man of gray. I have my grays on. I didn't plan that. But those two, if we haven't watched them, are going to be money, if we have the understanding. Sh sugars, especially in the form, excessive carbohydrates, especially in the form of sugars, especially in the form of refined sugars, refined uh, extra processed foods, our body stores as fat because it can't burn it because I'm sitting at a computer. I don't need to burn carbohydrates and not my computer, right? I should be burning fat. I should be burning like this. I shouldn't be doing this. Now, I know this is not me on. I actually had, uh, we went to eat. We had uh, the super, uh, what do you call it? The super fuel salad uh, from the restaurant we were at. It was like, kale and quinoa and tomatoes, it was wonderful. So it was carbs, but it was non-processed carbs, not sugars, right? In the simplistic form of sugars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Josh, it, it, you nailed it. Yes, exactly. Lipogenic. Yep. And what happens is if we're stressed out, we have high stress, our cortisol levels rise, right? So cortisol levels rise. When we're stressed out, our body goes to fight or flight mode. 
right? And if we're in fight or flight, does our body think it should shed excess weight or it should store excess weight, excess calories? What does it want to do? Does it want to store or shed? Yes, it wants to store. So if we're up, we're not sleeping well, we're stressed out, we're eating so because we're stressed, I got to work more. And what do we have? A bunch of carbs, some chips, and it's crazy. And we're up, and we crash. The excess calories now, because they're especially sugars, especially carbohydrates, we're not burning for a long time, they're not repairing our body. Our body stores it for men and the gut and women, especially around here. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm going to make a thing. I'm going to, if, if they can store fat here, right, and in my traps, again, we're coming on some billion dollar ideas, but they're not. Okay, that's not how it works. So we get the general premise of how this works. We want to increase recovery, keep us at a steady state for most of the day, burning fat as much as we can using protein for repair. Look, if you're using protein as a fuel source, you're probably gonna end up in a doctor. Protein is not a fuel, super minimal, and if you're there, it's not good, right? So fat can be a long-term fuel source. That's the whole idea behind, say, like, a bulletproof coffee, and that type of stuff, right? So we get the general prints. You know, a bunch of fat to burn in the morning, good to go for the day. I'm gonna share my screen now, excuse me. And this meal plan here, I'm gonna to go to share full screen. Where is this? The meal plan here. Um, and Josh, I'm gonna need you to manage the forum. Pull this over. I can't see my screen, but I wanna adjust it so I couldn't just load it up uh, earlier. Can everyone see this? Give me a yes or no. Yes, good, awesome. Okay, so what this is, is our macronutrient-based meal plan that is also based around when you're going to work out. Like I said, this is a very uh, high-end thing. This is not, it's not like a, a basic thing. So what we wanna do is I can adjust this, let's say 200 pounds. This individual is at 265. And it comes with four phases. It comes with a base phase, a cut one, a cut two, a cut three, and the day you don't work out. Um, actually, I'm going to put it back up to 265 just so I can show you. Actually, let's, let's see it there. Um, and I'll show you how it adjusts. All right, so here, for the day generally, this individual at 200 pounds, uh, similar, but no. It's So, a similar idea. We took it and made it into more of a max macro plan, Renee, and based on the type of training you guys are doing. So again, you're going to see a lot of similarities. I'm going to show you where it differs. For that, we built this from scratch, uh, but we've had a lot of success on that plan. It's really good. And you're going to see similarities for sure. I'd say inspired, but not, not uh, cut and paste, right, um, for that. Uh, so here, so the first part is we're built there. What we want to do is for based on when you work out, in the day is when your carbs are going to be timed for. Uh, is it not on your screen, uh, Vanessa? Do you see it here? And if you're on mobile, that may be hard. Okay, so just so you know, I'm going to email this to you. You can go back and watch later. Yeah, exactly. Erica, too, for you guys, it's fine. Uh, here's the idea is that. It'll sync up your current body weight. You never change the body weight. So if we go to a later cut plan, let's say you start at 200. If you're at 188, you keep the following days at 200. Okay, you don't go to 188, then it's, it's double. That's your base. So the idea is at this level, a person training, doing a workout for the day, like a regular hard, some general fitness stuff like you guys would be doing, uh, able to shed between one to two pounds per week. So it's not a 48-hour Hollywood diet. It's not a crash diet, right? One to two pounds per week. Everyone following me so far? As long as you can do that, we're going to stay on base. So even if three months in, you're losing a pound a week, 
stay there. Why would you change? It's working. It's working, right? So the idea is, let's say you train first thing in the morning, right? You train before you've eaten, right? You're going to have a workout shake with some carbohydrates in it. Now, why do we want to have a workout shake with some carbohydrates in it? Why would we want that? Yeah, yeah, well, you need carbs to fuel your workout, right? Because you're going to burn them. You're going to burn them. All right, so you will have a shake with some carbs in it. So with some sugars, like a Gatorade, a protein shake, and we'll go through the method of how to, how to add that in there. So most of your carbs in the day will be built around that, okay? Protein, you're going to have, so again, this is for an a individual this size. So he's going to have... So that there's no, you're not going to eat your veggies if you're working out first thing in the morning. That's crazy, right? And your carbs are going to be there. For the rest of the day, within 30 to 60 minutes of the workout, you're going to have a steady amount of protein, some vegetables. And look, really on this, you can have more vegetables and greens than it, it says. Right? We, we talked about it. You could really do a few. I, I would like you to have as much carbohydrates as you need for the day. A healthy carbs and a fat amount. So it's consistent all day, steady, 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 throughout, right? But the main thing is we're fueling the big carbs during and before the workout. And so some before, some during, and the rest after. So that's kind of like all encompassing of training. And I, I, would, I would consider training uh, within 60 minutes pre-workout, to you know 30 to 60 minutes after workout so it might be over a three hour block right that we're trying to fuel you the idea is and i'll go off sharing the idea is that as long as we can stay steady on that homeostasis right for our body is our does our body think crazy stuff's happening or that everything's okay it's gonna think everything's okay right so if we can do that it's not going to be in this like panic mode and we can shed. That's what we want. Okay? Everyone wants to be able to go, hey, look, this for, for body comp and we can shed, right? That's good. Um, what if you train after breakfast? What if you train after two meals? After three, right? Uh, if you, this would be basically at night. And so same thing. So in the morning, you wake up, you don't need extra workout carbs. Some basic stuff. Look, there's going to be some carbs in everything you eat. Right? So there's always some, so there'll be some there. So it's balance. Right? After your next meal, here, after this meal, eventually you're working out at night here. And who here works out at night? I'm going to share my screen again. Sorry, I was talking about that. Not sharing my screen. Let's say you were, who here works out at night or later in the day? Evenings. A lot of you guys, evenings, exactly. And yeah, Melinda, that's most people. Yep. So you would choose. That, hey, I chose to train here after my last meal, right? Or after my second meal. So you choose that, and you follow the plan. You just go, hey, I wake up. Here's what I do. I have my next meal. Here's what I do. Next meal, and, and this, right? So you just basically follow the plan of when you're supposed to have these macros. And, like, and look, if you've been following the PN uh, coaching, Macros aren't 100% accurate, right? Everyone agrees by that by now. There's no exactly if there's five or six grams of protein in something. It's impossible, right? There's always going to be a variance. Everyone agree with that? Unless it's genetically modified, I can't tell you 100% yes. So look, so if you're close on this, you're going to be good. What is the general concept this plan's trying to get you to do, though? So just for base phase, what, what, who here can already see the tea leaves? Tell me what the general concept we're trying to do. Melinda, exactly. The thing is right time. We're trying to do get your timing to work for you, get your bias to stay in a rested state. The more we can rest, it doesn't think crazy things are happening, and that doesn't that prevents fall from spiking up. We prevent that. Our body goes, hey. Hey, I can burn. I can burn. I can sleep. We're not doing this all day, right? And that's fine. And again, 
but carbs are not the enemy. Excessive carbs, especially in the form of processed foods and sugars, especially when we can't burn them and we're not using them for workouts, that's the bad stuff, okay? Rest of the time, veggies in the form of carbs, right? Uh, proteins and fats, and we're money. Okay, so let's say we go through this. What happens if we stop losing one to two pounds per week? Maybe one to three pounds in that range. I'm going to go over here to cut one, which again I'll have here for you guys at 200 pounds. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not saying there, we, we stay at that same initial level because it's already pre-cut for you, right? So there, you see, now the workout carbs are a little less. The healthy carb amount is less. Fat is close, and is close, right? We're trying to keep those steady and reduce the carb amount you need, not reduce the fat and repair, because those are our long-term factors. If I start cutting that, it starts getting hard, right? Same idea, same follow the timing. What if you stop losing one to three pounds here? Go to cut two, right here. And now you're down 2,200 roughly, again, within a 10% range per day. That's about what we can expect. To say 2,200 total, I think you're probably being too hard on yourself if you're like doing this, trying to be 100% perfect. Hey, but protein's the same. Well, why is protein the same? Why doesn't protein change on here? Who can tell me why? Why is healthy fat only down one gram per meal? Who can tell me why? Yeah, lean muscles maintained. That's a great answer, Emily. Exactly. Yeah, lean muscle. What else? Who else has a good idea? Does our body store extra protein is fat yeah exactly renee yeah the uh, carbs need to go first right and again at first i'm not trying to take away everything and go aha never have a carb like i said uh, carbs are not enemy it's how they're proportioned how they're appropriated how we in our lifestyle factors right so if i can keep your protein which is for repair the same that means you can keep working out hard your body will come back. I don't want to prevent you to bounce back healthy. Fat is our long-term fuel source. We're cutting it minimally, very minimal. Hey, no, no, you look, Renee, when can you have your Oreo? When can you have it? Nope. I mean, look, you can have up to a certain amount. Look, you can't you can't have a million things of broccoli either. I mean, that's healthy. You can't eat 40 pounds. Look, if you eat 800 calories of uh, asparagus, you're going to gain weight. Like, I don't care, right? Uh, yeah, pre and post workout. Yeah, so if you want an Oreo, know that if you do a super, if Josh programs a super nasty lactic piece for you, man, that, I'm pumping that Oreo in. You're going to use insulin as a positive response hormonally. Which we'll get into a little later, um, soon enough, right? So, so there's that. Uh, so same thing. Eventually, you go to cut three, and look if you can't do cut three, if if you're not losing weight on cut three, uh, same idea, then um, it's pretty crazy. Uh, the non-training day. So if you don't train, right? Do we need the extra carbs and the extra calories? Do we need those? 
No, you don't, right? If it's Wednesday, you don't work out. It's a base non-training day, right? Uh, there, so so you'll see that the non-training day doesn't have the extra carb spike because you're not going to use that, right? Because why do you need it? You don't need it. Just be steady. Um, how to cheat? I'm going to end this. So that's basically how that part works. Where do cheat meals come in on this diet? Reward meals. But no, not really at all. It, 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 look, this, the, hey, the same amount as you're doing now, uh, uh, one to two a week, right? Probably a small one midweek I think is good, you know, and then maybe a larger one on the weekend. Yes, it, yeah, look, we've got to we've 80, 20, 90, 10 this, right? 80, 20, 90, 10 is a little more, uh, you know, fast-paced results, but if you're trying to do 100, zero, What's, what's going to happen? We know what's going to happen. You're too hard on yourself. We already did that when we were talking before the recording. You're too hard on yourself. And then what happens? Okay, we, we burn out, we crash, we overreach, we do this, and then we fall off, and we never get back on because we're ashamed or embarrassed. And For what? For what, man? 80-20, hey, like, if you can get... If you could get 80% of this diet plan or this meal plan right, would you get results? You got 80% of it right. Had a nice night out with your significant other, right? Celebrated your kid's birthday, you know, had something, went off for the weekend. Yeah, you're going to kill it. You would kill it. Yes, for the long haul. Josh, you're exactly right. What I want most for you in this group is that over 20 years, right? You're good. I mean, what's the amount of uh, excessive carbs you eat over 20 years? Well, like 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds. That's what I care about. Not a scoop, not a quarter slice of, slice of cheesecake. Like, I'm not getting caught up in the small details. I'm looking at big lifestyle macro pictures here. So, yeah, so if it's Saturday night and you're out, don't think you have to look, look at, if you guys feel like you have to look over your shoulder going, is Tim going to see me do this? We're doing it wrong. We're doing it wrong. You know? Like, look, if you have weigh-ins on Monday, then that's probably wrong. That's different. But it's just long-term view. I want you to, your body to be de-stressed. If we start stressing about our stress, that's double stress. That's double stress, man. Don't do that. Right? It's okay. Plan it in advance. Know that. So when it comes up, you're like, yeah, it's good. It's cool. You know? Is everyone cool with that? Everyone feels like that's fair? I think it's fair. I love popcorn. I love I love popcorn and not regular popcorn. I like to make popcorn. I get the clean type, but then I can pour Himalayan sea salt on it, and I... Uh, you know, melt uh, grass-fed butter. The, what's the Irish grass-fed butter that's popular? I don't know. I melt like a good amount of that on there. Pour it all over my butter. Keurig, yeah. But then I rotate the popcorn over and I keep to every level. So the whole thing is evenly dispersed. I'm not joking about this. That's my jam. Do I seem like I feel guilty about this at all? That's a lot of excessive carbohydrates and salt, right? And but in fact, not not even a little bit, not even like not even this much. I love it. I'm gonna I want to do it tonight. I don't even care. But guess what? I had an awesome super salad with some fats. We had avocado uh, with it. It was so good for lunch. I'm good. I'm on my plan, right? Um, with this, I'll share my screen again. Now we're almost done here. is our q and A. I just going to go through everything of, hey, how do you get carbs and what do you find, X, Y, and Z? Uh, uh, what's, you know, restricted? What is, how much is this uh, worth, et cetera? You know, the, the whole thing we've put together, a big q and A for you. We also put together a food and macro source. 
So if you're wondering how much each gram is worth, like I said, if we're within 10%, you're killing it. Here's how much some fish is. Here's how much turkey, steak, fatter bread, and Steve did a great job putting all this together. And you see down here at the bottom, the veggie sources, we don't really count those against you, right? So you should be able to just put those into your plans and be good. So, uh, so if you're looking for the healthy carbs, here's healthy carbs, this middle area that we think are awesome. If you're looking for healthy fats, here's some. Uh, we also shared that um, diet plan. Let me close one more thing. Let's see. Uh, find out. Thanks searching this here right the quick basically goes along with it what type of fats are good for you what do, what do we want to avoid what type of carbs are good what's the timing what do we want to avoid so we've been building up 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 over time all that stuff so try and help make sure that we actually do this we have a good base of support for you to succeed on Does that make sense and not just here's something and everyone feels horrible on it and it's not good. So there's been a method to this. Uh, sometimes you guys have done great. Look, hey, and let me say, this is an awesome plan. Uh, let me frame this for you guys. Um, is anyone here going to do it perfect the first time? Yeah, you kind of do good, kind of struggle, kind of do, you're going to get better. Like everything else we do, and that's the plan. Get better at it. And what happens if we have a question? What do we do? Yeah, so Renee, so you've done similar ones before. I asked Facebook group. Look at how much interaction everyone had when you asked questions a couple weeks ago. It was like boom, a fire got started, right? And everyone was fired up and motivated and got answers and felt support. It's the same thing. So we know we're not alone here. We know we can do. Uh, we can always improve. There's a lot of good information out there that nutrition can be very overwhelming. Um, what I need from you guys is just to josh at juicecompound.com. Email him the starting weight that you're at. And I know that could be uh, embarrassing. Look, I don't give a crap. Josh, do you give a crap? Hey, here's... Here's two shits, and me and Josh don't give them. All we want is for you to get to where you need to be with the right plan. So don't, uh, yeah, exactly. Or you could be a hundred pounds, and you could be four foot tall, and you could be overweight, right? Like, like, and and look, and hey, look, if you're if someone's happy at 300 pounds and they're healthy and their blood works good, I'm not. I don't care. I'm not judging. I just want everyone here to get to where they need, right? So yeah, exactly. Uh, as, you know, and like we said, the scale is not the best marker for most things. It's a good starting point for us to help do this. But ultimately, uh, I'm, I'm seven foot four, right? Exactly. But ultimately, we want internally to be healthy, mentally to be healthy, right? That's most. That's most important. And to be working out consistently, achieving your goals and doing this stuff. So email Josh that. He's going to aggregate it all. I'm going to work with Steve, and we're going to get you guys each your custom plan set for you guys. And I'm super excited about this. I hope everyone here is excited uh, about it. I, it's going to be a, a, it's a killer plan. Like I said, we've had some really good um, uh, success on this. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be great. Um, yeah, guys, that, that's all I have today. I want to let everyone get on with their Sunday night. If you have questions, post it up in the Facebook group. I know other people have questions too. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to uh, get comfortable with that. But uh, like I said, I'm super happy with where we've gone, and we're just getting started. We're just we're just scratching the surface of the things we can do to so start getting dialed in. So um, yeah, Emily, thank well, no, th thank you guys for being so awesome. If I didn't have motivated people to do this with, I couldn't do it, right? Yeah. Well, you guys rock, and I hope to see you all soon. Yeah, thank you all. Yeah, and it's the truth, and every one of you, and have a great day. And let's just be active in the group, and let's kill it. Why not, right?